Okay, so welcome back, everybody. We are continuing on now. This is going to be session 11. And if you recall, back whenever we did our intro to chapter two, I talked a little bit about the parables from Matthew chapter 13. And how I think that in many ways, now again, every parable is important in every way, but in many ways, those parables are actually going to mirror some of the ideas of these seven churches. So let's take a look at that first parable mentioned, the parable of the sower. And it's a pretty straightforward parable in the sense that Jesus explains it. We actually know what he means by it. So let's just read through it real quick in Matthew chapter 13. It's verses three through nine. So in Matthew 13, verse three, he starts out, he says, and he spake many things unto them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the, this is, yeah, Matthew 13, sorry, verse three. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Where else do you see that phrase, who hath ears to hear, let him hear? It's interesting. It's all over Revelation, right? It's particularly those two letters. So here we have a parable that Jesus says are going to be talking about the kingdom of heaven, right? The first thing we look at is what, who is it that's doing the sowing? The sower is doing the sowing. And what is he sowing? All right. So we see it's a direct result of the sower sowing in chapter 13, verse three says, behold, a sower went forth to sow. So the sower is personally spreading the seed. What's the seed? Well, God doesn't leave us guessing. He tells us. Jesus explains it to us in Matthew 13, 19. He says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom. So the seed is the word of the kingdom. So the sower is spreading the word of the kingdom. So this man is personally spreading the word to anyone who will hear it. So remember when Jesus Christ, what was he preaching when he came? He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand right? Repent. He went around and continued on a message that even John the Baptist was preaching, but he was even closer to the kingdom of heaven, right? Jesus was there. It had arrived. Receive it. So he's spreading this word, but did everybody respond in the same way to the words of Jesus? No. To some people, he said, come and follow me, right? And guess what? They came and followed him. To other people, they listened, and he said, oh, I'm the bread of life. Well, I'm out of here. That's crazy talk, right? So, we're, again, everyone talked a little different. And then you get to verse four, he starts talking about these different views. So 13, four said, and he sowed and some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. So many who heard Jesus speaking rather than accepting or seeing the miracle for what it was. Oh my gosh, a blind man can see. But instead it was immediately snatched away. How dare you do this on the Sabbath? How could you? Don't you know this man must be evil? He's healing people and bringing them back from the dead on the wrong day. And you see how that led many people to reject him. So again, what are the birds in this scenario? Right? He says they fell by the wayside. The fowls came and devoured them up. Well, again, we don't have to guess. Matthew 13, 19, he says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, doesn't comprehend what the word is. Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Those words, whenever you're spreading the gospel, they're like, I don't get it. And instead of listening more and seeking more understanding, Satan shows up and says, I ah, forget about that. You don't need that, right? So it's snatched away. And he says, and catch away, that was his own heart. That this is he which received the seed by the wayside. So we begin to understand in these parables of Jesus, Birds, agents of Satan or Satan himself, right? They represent the wicked one. So we need to keep in mind that this imagery that Jesus uses in his parables. Is anyone here familiar with Aesop's fables? You familiar with those? Generally, if you talk about a lion, it's about the guy in charge, right? No matter which fable you're reading, 
it's this consistent imagery. The foxes are always the sly ones, right? You know, all these different people represent different things. Well, that consistency is the same thing I believe Jesus uses in these parables. So we're going to see these birds show up again a few parables down the line, okay, about two parables later. So just keep in mind the parables, the, excuse me, the birds, the fowls, they're the agents of the wicked one or they're Satan himself. Do you remember what Paul had warned the Ephesians about? He told them that after he left, what is it? False teachers. False teachers. Your pulpits from your own selves are going to be filled with false teachers, wolves in sheep's clothing, grievous wolves is what he said, right? Which goes right along with what Jesus said, talking about people being like wolves in sheep's clothing, right? So they're going to corrupt the message that he had worked so hard to give them. Matthew 13, 5 says, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. There was no root, okay? And I'm going to argue that the root is faith. There was no faith. They heard it. They listened to it. It sounded good. But they never accepted it, okay? So he says, uh, and because and, uh, forthwith they sprung up, they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, they withered away. So the next group are those that would be within the church, but lacked true faith. They would be there, but had no true faith. This is a congregation that's going to easily be deceived because there's no faith. They believe whatever the teacher tells them. Do you know that's common in churches today? The pastor said it must be true. Well, why do you believe that? Well, the pastor said it last Sunday. That's great. I'm glad the pastor said. Did you look it up? Yeah. Um, well, how would they receive the word with joy mm -hmm. if that's not clear? Well, let me ask you this. What if I told you that Jesus loves you and died for you? That sounds good, right? I mean, would anyone, anyone, I mean, is there any reason not to accept that? I can receive that word, right? But do I truly accept that? Whenever trouble comes up for being a Christian, whenever persecution arises for being a Christian, what happens? So, for example, Judas, he was called by Christ. Can't argue with that. He responded. He listened to it. But did he have any faith? Had he accepted Jesus as a savior or was he looking for a different king? Was he looking for a king that would come and overthrow Rome? Many Christians, I believe, and again, this is a statement. It's not mine. And I can't remember the exact length. I want to say it's like eight inches or something. How far is it from heaven to hell? It's eight inches. Head knowledge versus heart knowledge. I can believe something or I can accept something. I can believe that I am Carly's husband, right? But as soon as my emotional state changes, I might say, I no longer want her. I'm done. I'm, it's over. Or I can accept that I'm her husband and understand that no matter what happens, whether I hate her or I love her, I am her husband and I will forever be. There is a big difference between what you accept and what you just know, what you just believe. And I believe in this situation, these people are receiving the word. Remember, there are those who, who received it but didn't understand it. And the Satan came and snatched it away. But the difference was in order to grow, you had to have root. And again, this is a parable, right? We got to understand what is the symbolism of this? These are, again, Jesus is spreading the good news to everyone. He wants everyone to hear the message. But clearly, everyone who hears the message doesn't accept. So we look here in, uh, it says, and he explains it. He talks in verse 20, he says, But they that receive the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. But hath he not root in himself? The word did not penetrate his heart. Where is root? What comes out of the mouth? It's what's in the heart. From the treasures of the heart does it come forward. And if I have no root, it has not, I have not accepted it. It has not come into my heart. So he says, and for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, if your claim to be a Christian or whatever brings trouble into your life, says, by and by, he is offended. He tosses it aside. Go ahead, sir. Mm -hmm. 
experience and then deal with such a lot. Okay. It was a uh, they made a type of deal where a compromise of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly right. I mean, people make compromise rather than standing for their faith. And particularly, do they have their faith? Because we see there are still two people to talk about. There's one that have no fruit and one that does. Go ahead. And, and this cry of your country was, we have been persecuted, we have been no stand, you know. Right. Uh, lose my job or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and we're not the victims here. We're the victors, right? Whether the world likes it or not, Jesus wins. And we should stand for our faith because, again, he talks about those who um, confess him before men. He'll confess before the Father, all right? So this church particularly, this is going to do, excuse me, this parable is representing a kingdom of heaven where the word gets out there, but there are going to be false converts. And they're going to be true converts, right? And there are some who are eager to get up and go for Christ. Yes, it's popular. It's cool to get up and give my testimony until it's not, until you risk your life, right? Will there be a time in the future maybe those same people will be saved? Well, and I, I think I won't be surprised. We're going to talk a lot more about that. I think that's a very interesting question for the people who didn't accept it this time, maybe had a superficial understanding. Will they actually turn to him, especially during the tribulation? Again, countless, I would argue, do turn to him. And I think it certainly could be. Okay. So then, he, so we're not surprised here that there's going to be this church filled with works, good works for God. But unfortunately, they're going to lose that initial excitement. And the love of Christ is not going to be apparent in them. And they're going to go in the wrong direction. And you have the next group. It says, and some fell in good dirt, but it was among the thorns. Verse seven, some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. So now we begin to understand because of the corruption and the division from the level of the church leaders down, many are going to receive the word, accept the truth, truly repent, truly become saved. But rather than live in fruitful, godly lives, they compromise. They don't take stands. They don't live for Christ. They want to avoid the controversy. They want to prefer to focus on peace rather than truth. They become unfruitful, just as Jesus explains in verse 22. He says, he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. The care of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he become unfruitful. So this church is going to be full of compromise, if this is representing a church indeed. Even when the true believers, when is it going to be full of compromise? Doesn't mean there's not true believers, but it's when the true believers Refuse to stand up for the truth. Show me that word. Mm -hmm. I believe on January 6th, the relative is sincere, honest, Christian love. But that temptation to choke and choke and choke and choke. Oh, they didn't do the right thing. That's exactly right. And that's actually one of the, not, not to get off topic too much, but it's interesting. God forbids you to make decisions in group think. You can't go with a crowd to do good or evil because it's no longer you thinking. You just do whatever the crowd is doing. So again, but finally, there, there's going to be that compromise, but there's also going to be those that overcome from this church, those who stand for the truth, even when it's not the popular thing. So there was a final group in 13 verse 8. It says, but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some 60-fold, some 30-fold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And of course, Jesus explains that those who received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, bringeth forth some 100-fold, some 30, some 60. 
So again, there's a whole lot you can understand from this parable. It's not that it just has to do with the church, okay? No matter where you are in history, we know that the word of God is available and the word of God continues to be preached. And yes, people respond to it very differently. Some violently, some will receive it. Some places it's more available than in other places, right? And ultimately, what are you doing when you receive the word of God? Hopefully you're taking it, you're putting it in your heart and you're becoming fruitful not becoming, as Paul calls it, a carnal Christian, right? A worldly Christian, but rather being a spiritual Christian and not caring about the world. But when you compare these ideas to the idea of this earliest church, the church during the time of the apostles, it's interesting. Who was the sower? Who started the church of the apostles? Well, who sowed the seed? It was Jesus Christ, right? The sower went out to sow. He preached. We saw a variety of people right? Responding to his preaching. We saw that some immediately rejected it, particularly represented by the Pharisees and the scribes, the teachers of the law. And Jesus calls them the children of the devil. How interesting. And he says, the agents of Satan come and snatch it up. You make them citizens of hell, just like yourself. You refuse to go and you won't let anyone in, right? To heaven. You don't want to go to heaven and you won't let anyone else go is what he tells them. So again, there are some who superficially accept it, but as soon as the doctrine became questionable, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Sorry, bud, I'm out, right? They weren't interested at that point. Soon as there was persecution for weird teaching, they're like, no, no, I'm gone. And of course, there were some who accepted him and said, yes, I'm gung ho. I'm going to sell everything I have. I'm just going to hang on to you know, a little bit of this cash in my pocket. And they stuff it in their pocket and go and lie. Were they very fruitful? Well, maybe as bad examples of what not to do, right? Remember who we're talking about? Ananias and That's right. Ananias and Sapphira. But then there were some who were very fruitful. You see Paul, Peter, the other apostles, early Stephen, all these other uh, deacons that we call them, whatever you want to call them. So again, what is it that drives you? Do you see how this parable, at least in some aspects, can represent this early church? Okay. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and stop this session, and we will continue here in a few minutes, about one, one or two minutes, on the beginning of Revelation chapter 2.